Good evening, family and friends. 
Our commencement exercises will start in a few moments. We ask everyone to please be seated at this time and remain seated throughout our graduation ceremony, with the exception of the national anthem. At this time, please silence all cell phones and other electronic devices. We have a professional photographer taking pictures of each and every graduate as they receive their diplomas. These photos will be available to you shortly. Please do not come forward to take pictures during the awarding of the diplomas. For safety, we respectfully ask that you keep the walkways and aisles clear during the ceremony and to allow the graduates to safely proceed in at the beginning of the ceremony. If you're feeling ill for any reason, and need the services of an EMT, we have a health and safety station in the driveway by the entrance to the field. Thank you very much.
Good evening. My name is Samuel Zamet, and I am the senior class president. Welcome to Fairfield Ludlow High School commencement exercises for the class of 2023. Let's now all unite in celebrating the diversity and unity of our country. Please stand for our national anthem performed by senior members of the Chamber Choir in Belcott. that await us. As we stand here on the mere precipice of a new chapter in our lives, I want to share with you a message about the power of making memories and living life to the fullest. We have spent countless hours poring over textbooks, laboring through assignments, and striving to achieve academic excellence. We have worked diligently, pushing ourselves to the limits, and today we finally reap the rewards of our hard work. <laughs> But as we move forward, it is essential to remember that life is not solely about achievements and accolades. Life is a collection of moments, a tapestry woven from the memories we create. It's about the laughter shared with friends, the conversations that spark ideas, and the adventures that ignite our souls. Graduation day marks a milestone, but it is merely a stepping stone on the path of our lives. The true essence lies in what we make of the days and the years to come. But as we embark on this journey, let us not forget the value of connection and relationships. Life is not a solo endeavor. It is meant to be shared with others. Take time to cultivate deep and meaningful connections. Surround yourself with people who inspire you, who challenge you to be better, and who support you unconditionally. It is in these relationships that we will find solace, joy, and the strength to overcome obstacles. And while we strive for success and chase our dreams, let us not lose sight of what truly matters. Take time to savor the simple joys of life, the warmth of the sun on your face, the taste of your favorite meal, the sound of laughter filling the air. These moments may seem insignificant, but they are the threads that weave the fabric of our lives. Cherish them, for it is in these ordinary moments that we will find extraordinary happiness. As we bid farewell to our beloved alma mater, let us carry with us the memories we have made, the lessons we have learned, and the friendships that we have forged. Let us live each day with purpose, passion, and gratitude. Let us live life to the fullest, leaving no stone unturned and no opportunity wasted. As my grandfather has told me countless times, there is a reason why the rear view mirror is so much smaller than your front shield window. Memories, like delicate fragments of time, hold within them the essence of our past experiences. They serve as windows into the tapestry of, tapestry of our lives, allowing us to reflect upon cherished moments and learn from lessons of the past. Just as the rearview mirror in a car is smaller than the expensive windshield, the size differential symbolizes the contrasting roles of memories and the present moment. 
The rearview mirror reminds us to glance back occasionally, offering glimpses of where we have been, helping us navigate and make informed decisions in the present. It acts as a reminder that while memories are valuable, they should not overshadow the forward journey, where the vast expanse of the windshield represents the endless possibilities that lie ahead. In life, it is important to cherish memories, but not get trapped in that small rearview mirror, for it is by embracing the future that we truly grow and create new moments worth remembering. Congratulations, my dear friends, on this remarkable achievement. As we embark on this new chapter, may our hearts be filled with the courage to, to chase our dreams, the wisdom to appreciate the journey, and the joy of making memories that will last a lifetime. Ludlow has molded us into a group of true Renaissance men and women. No matter what you do after you step off this field, I urge you to embrace your individuality, shine in your authenticity, glorify your personality, and live to make memories that will last you, in, that will last you a lifetime. Here's to an extraordinary future filled with laughter, love, and the relentless pursuit of happiness. Now I'd like to introduce our head principal, Dr. Red Katzis. I love you, Broglos. I love you, Jack. Sam and Al. Great job, Sam. Thank you very much. Good evening, esteemed guests, faculty, parents, relatives, friends, and good evening. Amazing class of 2023. For our new guest tonight, my name is Greg Hatzis, and I'm the proud and very honored person to be the head principal of Fairfield Level High School. First of all, a shout out to our newly crowned Class Double L State Champion Girls Softball Team. I don't want anyone here to let this stormy, crazy weather to diminish this moment for one second. Having to do this ceremony under these conditions just confirms something that I've known for four years. This class is special. You are special for the way that you look out for one another. I've never seen a group of students as thoughtful and caring, not just for your peers, but for the plight of others in surrounding communities, places around the world. You cheer for each other, you celebrate each other, you support each other. I have seen so many of you perform incredible acts of kindness. You are special because of your accomplishments. Art awards, music accolades, drama recognitions, repeat championships, and never before won in Ludlow's history, FCAC and state championships, scholarships, college acceptances, special programs, military enrollments, and club accomplishments. You've established fundraising events never seen before, and your proms were amazing. Every time I turned around this year, someone was sharing how you were all soaring to new heights that no falcon before you had ever flown. You were special because you are no stranger to a little stormy weather. COVID shut your freshman year down, you were split in half as sophomores. And in the spring of your junior year, there were a series of tragic events that just piled on top of each other that no student should ever have to endure. But you're also special because of how you handled all of that. You found ways to reconnect with each other. You adapted to constant changes, not just in how we run school, but in how society works now. You grieved, you recovered, and you marched on. And in your senior year, you restored the amazing culture at our school and set an amazing example for future classes to follow. I hope that many of you had a chance to see Rent, our Spring Drama Club's musical production. One character, one character played incredibly by Lindsay Prosco, sings, The only way out is up, a leap of faith. The only thing to do is jump over the moon. That is exactly what you did after your first three years at Love Love. The only way out was up. Another character, played beautifully by Isabel Toma, sings, There's only now, there's only here. Give in to love or live in fear. No other course, no other way, no day but today. And that is how you lived your senior year. 
And just like all the stellar athletes and scholars and artists did all year, you took what was given to you and you crushed it. My daughter, Sophia, graduates from her high school tomorrow night. So the class of 23 already had a special place in my heart. And all you future Yukon Huskies out there, look out for her for me. But even that aside, by just being who you are, you will be remembered by me and by many faculty as an extraordinary and amazing group of young people who will forever have a special place in our hearts and in Ludlow history. Wherever your road takes you, I ask that you all please come back to visit and reach out so that we may know what's happening with you and if we can ever help you in any way, don't hesitate to ask. We truly look forward to hearing about your future accomplishments and the Falcon footprints that you will leave. From today on, you are forever Falcons. Thank you so much. I would now like to introduce Captain Therrington, the class treasurer, to present the class gift. Hello, all. Um, as part of student government, uh, my fellow officers and I get to decide what the class gift is for this year um, for the future attendees of Ludlow High School. Um, I know for a fact that one aspect that everyone looks forward to in high school is being able to have more freedom, whether that means being able to roam through the hallways in class, I mean, not necessarily, but you know what I mean, bathroom breaks. Anyway, <laughs> um, being able to hang out during free periods or if there's a canceled class. One place, excuse me, one place that I know I always spent my time was in the courtyard. I know that many people spend time out there during the fall and spring and love to sit out there to do work or get fresh air, hang out with their friends. So um, all of us as a class immediately agreed that we want to preserve this space that we all love dearly and as our class gift have decided to donate 5000 excuse me, $5,000 to more comfortable and long-lasting outdoor furniture. We want to make sure that future classes can enjoy the space as much as we have. Thank you.
In our journey through Lolo, we have witnessed firsthand the power of unity and compassion. We have supported each other through academic endeavors, extracurricular pursuits, and personal triumphs and struggles. So as we move forward from this moment, let us carry the knowledge that our individual paths may diverge, but our collective experience will endure because change is an ever-present force. I still remember when I entered freshman year, every day at dinner, my parents would ask me the dreaded question, what did you do at school today? Perhaps out of frustration or a desire to maintain my teenage nonchalant demeanor, I would without fail respond with nothing. But to look back now, it wasn't nothing at all. It was actually a very significant something. Freshman year was our initiation into the vast realm of high school, a year of new belongings, unfamiliar faces, and a maze of hallways seemingly impossible to navigate. It was a time of personal exploration, not just in finding friends, but finding out what you truly valued. Freshman year marked a profound shift from the 45-minute classes and minimal homework of middle school to the daunting block schedule of high school. And as we embarked on this new chapter of our educational journey, we were met with challenges that pushed us to the brink of our comfort zones. We balanced math, science, history, and languages with sports, clubs, and activities, and at times the workload seemed unbearable, yet we grappled through it and always made it out victorious, or at least we thought. In March 2020, we received the unexpected news that school would be canceled for the next two days. Initially, a relief washed over us, akin to the joy of an unanticipated snow day. Little did we know, however, that these two days would turn into an extended period of uncertainty, keeping us away from the embrace of normalcy for months to come. As days turned into weeks and weeks stretched into months, we found ourselves navigating uncharted territory. Rolling out of bed, hopping on a Google Meet, somehow always having a broken camera, our physical classroom was replaced with Google Classroom, our interactions confined to screens. The loss of routine which had once defined our high school experience took a toll on us. We missed the annual battle of the house festivities. We missed the camaraderie of team practices and the adrenaline of competitive games. We longed for the shared laughter and shared passions that fueled our daily lives, so we adapted. We started doing drive-bys, distance meetings outside, and found creative outlets to keep our passions alive. Then sophomore year rolled around and we were bombarded with emails. Hybrid learning, back to full remote, to cohort A and cohort B, to half day Wednesdays, enough changes to make our heads spin. We returned to school with masks on, unable to recognize those around us, but look where we are now. Though the road has been arduous, we've made the most of our junior and senior years. Battle of the houses, return to normal sports, in-person college tours, we have arrived at this milestone together. I want everyone to remember that the challenges which we will face in the future it may seem daunting, the path uncertain, but we have prepared for this very moment. We've honed our critical thinking skills, cultivated our creativity, and nurtured our empathy. So with that said, now it's time to answer the age-old question, what do you want to be when you grow up? It's a tough question when professional napper and full-time vacationer may not be feasible career options, but let us not be discouraged. Falcons, we have the power to wake up, change our minds, and pursue our dreams no matter the stage of life we find ourselves in. Let's embrace, let's embrace the uncertainty that lies ahead as we wake up to the endless possibilities that await us in the future. Congratulations, Fairfield Ludlow, Class of 2023. We did it. Thank you, Kira. Please now welcome our second salutatorian to the stage, Nathaniel Thompson. Uh, thank you all for coming today. Thank you to all the teachers, the parents, and everyone else who has helped us get to this day. Also, a special shout out to my parents, Maddie Owen and Nikita Noskov. I'd like to begin by reading two poems by Walt Whitman. Uh, the first poem, When I Read the Book. When I read the book, the biography famous, and is this then, said I, what the author calls a man's life? And so will someone, when I am dead and gone, write my life, as if any man really knew aught of my life? Uh, even I myself, I often think, know little or nothing of my real life. Only a few hints, a few diffused, faint clues and indirections I seek for my own use to trace out here. And the uh, second poem, Beginning My Studies. Beginning my studies, the first step pleased me so much the mere fact consciousness, these forms, the power of motion, the least insect or animal, the senses, eyesight, love. The first step I say awed me and pleased me so much 
I have hardly gone and hardly wish to go any farther, but to stop and loiter all the time to sing it in ecstatic songs. What I would like to say is this. From today, our lives will be what we make of them. We have seen a lot and been given a lot in our upbringing here in Fairfield. There is more to life than what we have had here. It is now our time to go out and search for it, to look for new horizons and open possibilities. It is my hope that everyone here chooses to make their life their own. Whoever you are, whatever life that you have lived, whatever life you will soon be living, there is much more to see, much more to do, and much more to become. Thank you. Please now welcome the, the um, members of the Bel Canto Singers and the Chamber Choir Singers under the direction of Miss Lauren Pine, who will be presenting In My Life by John Lennon. to address the class of 2023, please welcome our valedictorian and shortstop for the aforementioned state champion softball team, Elena Ovi. Hello, class of 2023, and everyone who has helped our class arrive here this morning. I want to start with a thank you to all of the teachers, administrators, family members, mentors, and community members who have inspired this group to strive for the heights we have already reached and the ones we dream of reaching. Graduates, look to your left and to your right to find the people who joined you on rowdy yet unforgettable bus rides to away games, those who you joked around with in class, those who you have taken a first day of school picture with for the past 10 years. Now, look to the bleachers to find those who endured the teary-eyed conversations with you during the pandemic, those who helped you write your college essay, those who are so incredibly proud of who you have grown up to be. 
Look to the perimeter towards the people who are always around for a post-class chat, those who extended the due dates when we were struggling, those who mentored us not only to be inquisitive students, but to be good people. Look around everywhere, and we are surrounded by members of our community. The custodial staff, who always cared about keeping our senior lounge clean, the coaches who taught us to fight through self-doubt, and even, in spirit, our pets who are always there for a hug. We are surrounded by a supportive, loving, and inspiring community, and each and every one of us here will always be attached to and will always be valued for our partner. This leads me to speak about a smaller community that I'm a member of. As many of you know, softball is a huge part of my life. To be honest, I never thought I'd be writing a graduation speech about it. But hey, it was this or ChatGPT, so authenticity won out. Our team had great success this year, winning the FCAC and state titles. I've been fortunate to wrap up this part of my life with all of the people who I grew up playing softball with, and our shared experiences have been among my most cherished. But at the beginning of the season, it was a different story. Things were really hard for me on a mental level. There was a lot of buzz about how special our team was and what amazing athletes we had on it. With that buzz came a number of expectations for the players as well as the team as a whole. I felt a lot of pressure to live up to these expectations for myself and for my team. It seemed like I had to be perfect and there wasn't any room for failure. I had to be better than I was last year and the year before that and it all piled up. During the first handful of games of the season, I'd go up to the plate and the same thing would keep happening. I'd be ready for my bat, and then I'd decide to let pitch go by. I was too late to jump on the opportunity. Then I'd say, I'm ready for this next pitch, and I'd swing five miles on a, early on a ball, sending it foul. This pattern kept spiraling. Each game, I'd lose more and more confidence. I wasn't the player that I thought I used to be and that I had so much potential to be. I felt lost. And class of 23, as we all move on to the next season of our lives, with a new team, new opponents, new challenges, there will be times when each of us is going to struggle. We're going to feel like we're not that same player, that same person that we used to be. It won't be so easy to make friends, to ace tests, to balance every aspect of our lives. We're going to feel like we've put in so much work that we've done it all before, but somehow we can't find ourselves, can't seem to hit a ball fair. When I was struggling, one of the things that helped me and that I hope will help everyone here, is that I remember that softball, like life, is a game of averages. At the beginning of the season, my average wasn't too hot. But as time passes, if you put in the work, things have a way of balancing themselves out. And so while the next phase of our lives may bring times that are trying, it's important to trust all that we put in to get here. That preparation we've all done is locked in. It can't be taken away or invalidated. We can bank on it, the knowledge, the skills, the life experience that we've attained to help us out of those rough patches. In softball, the best hitters hit 400, or in other words, six out of every 10 at-bats, the best hitters make an out. Being the perfectionist that I am, I struggle with accepting failure. However, failure is a part of softball, life, and happens more often than not. But failure is not the hallmark of the game. Resilience is. So moving forward on the paths we decide to take next year and beyond, it's important to lean in, even if you seem to be failing more than you're succeeding. Take that class that you've always wanted to try, but perhaps found intimidating. Stretch yourselves to try out different clubs, intramurals, jobs. Surround yourself with people you admire, those who make you want to grow. For failure is the condiment that gives success its flavor, according to Truman Capote, and in this next phase of our lives, we all start with an empty plate ready and waiting to be filled, sampled, and enjoyed. From our time at Ludlow, we put in the work. We participated in clubs and served our community. We studied hard, made lifelong bonds with friends, teachers, coaches, and teammates. We've gotten all our reps in. Our community has invested their time and resources to bring us to this point. We've done everything we need to prepare ourselves to be successful in the next part of our lives. I think one of the things I forgot at the beginning of the season was that playing with joy is the most essential part of being the player that I am. I've always been the teammate sporting a goofy smile after I make a big play, 
and I relish the shared moments of pure happiness, like after Chelsea launches another mammoth home run, where Katie's feet actually leave the ground to make a diving catch. So during my rough patch, I finally decided that no matter what, I was just going to take everything as it comes and enjoy every single moment of it. And that's when I fell in love with the process again. As we all move on next year, I urge everyone to play, to learn, to live with joy because you don't get a fresh start too often in life. A new beginning where you have the potential to do whatever you set out to do. Everything that we have done here at Love Low has prepared us for that. And we are all ready and able. I believe in us and I know that we can do it. Our community, everybody who showed up for us today believes in us. So maybe we should consider high school the preseason for, well, for the rest of our lives. The best lies in front of us. Let's go for it with joy. Thank you. I would now like to introduce Dr. Zakia Parrish. She's the Deputy Superintendent for the Fairfield Public Schools. Dr. Parrish, in front of us tonight, we have an outstanding group of students who have distinguished, distinguished themselves in academic achievement, community service, music, art, literature, drama, student government, and athletics. It is my distinct pleasure as head principal of Fairfield Little High School to present to you the class of 2023. Thank you, Dr. Haxis. On behalf of the Central Office Administration and the Board of Education, I accept the members of the class of 2023, 344 strong, who have met the requirements for graduation as stipulated in the statutes of the State of Connecticut and the policies in the Fairfield Board of Education. Therefore, I grant to you all the rights and privileges due to you under these statutes as graduates of the Fairfield Ludlow High School. As a symbol of your new status, you may move your tassels from the right-hand side to the left-hand side. present to you the Fearful Ludlow class of 2023. Congratulations. Thank you, Dr. Parrish. Friends and family, it is now time for the conferring of the diplomas. You can follow along in the order of the homerooms in the program. At this time, will all senior homeroom teachers from Warner House please report to the tent. Students of Warner House, please approach the stage. I would now like to call forward Warner House Head Principal, Mr. Sean Colley, and Board of Education member, Jessica Gerber. Give us a minute to reconfigure here. Lucy Marie Highland. 
Eleanor Barbara Nisley. Leonardo Nascimento. Matilda Elizabeth Nichols. Giuliano James Perlet. Catalina Ramirez Vargas. Catherine Elizabeth Ruggiero. Sarah Allison Sullivan. Nathaniel Patrick Thomas Thompson. Stephen John Varveris. Christian Michael Versailles. Home Room 333. Brody Towers Anderson. Cosette Kylie Butler. Ava Rosemary Sito. Nicholas Cortez. Anastasia Durrell. Ryan Robert Ferris. Cassidy Olivia Milford. John William Murray. William Gavin Nash. Yegor Naskoff. Scott William Ramirez. Colin Foster Riley. Mia Jane Scully. Jordan Marie Smith. Zara Rebecca Smith. Isabel Alexis Patrol. Kaylee Paige Walkerman. Quinn James Weaver. Nolan Forrest Winter. Quinn Rowlings Blackman. Jonathan Ashish Chaka. Zachary Thomas Connor. Catherine Diane Fitzgerald. Delia Margaret Cronin. Kyle Kenneth Frank Garriott. <laughs> Hannah Carol Jardina. <laughs> Emily Suzanne Grooms. Jake Ryan Hannah. <laughs> Ella May Priestley Kellersman. <laughs> Jane Tegan LaRoe. <laughs> Robert Marshall McIntosh. Luana Helena Caladeri Ramos. Luke Anthony Roman. Rory Michael Tamulis. Joseph Jerome Toro. Sophia Teresa Vasala. Spencer Noah Wright. Samuel Matt Zent. This is homeroom 315. Finn Stanley Atwood. Sarin Bazuklu. Robert Arthur Capron. Mia June Casson. Vivian Noel Senti. Meredith Carrie Connor. Caitlin Rose Finnegan. Sage Madison Davies Garver. Madeline Chase Greenberg. Della Burke Jackson. Grace Ann Kistner. Kira Ann McCauley. Quinn Joseph McCormick. Tamar Jr. McGill. Alexander Charles Moore. Eliza Pora. Judith Nelly Rojas. 
Isabella Sofia Bugani. Benjamin Jacob Valinsky. Mark Alexander Roy. Lily Deborah Beck, Anthony George Falletta, Ashton Robert Fiedler, Julie Lynn Skankavis, Ian David Jameson, Amelia Conway Carrison, Owen Delmar Lay, Agatha Julia Rakowska, Tyler James Mills. Riley Morgan Nathanson, Sarah Elizabeth Benico, Lindsay Elizabeth Perry, Amelia Zoraviana Radio, Nicholas Slinka, Tia Florence Stapleton, Akash Valipal, Mia Bard Von Brockish, Ethan Aaron Wallace. Joseph Zabry. And homeroom 312. Sophia Arana Madrigal. Aaron Jacob Field. Tatum Lee Holdery. Mark James Jalkin. Caroline Lang Carrison. Kira Margo Lorian. Johan Moon. Alexa Paige Nenner. Jennifer Nunez. Reina Store Pereira. Luke Martin Rison. Noah Matthew Saban. Alexandra Clark Shaver. Abigail Hope Schumacher, Sage Catherine Smith, Colin Marshall Wagenbach, Dimitri Jason Hish. Ladies and gentlemen, that is Waterhouse. Emmy 
Daria Halen Rosanna Bruce. Noah Alexander Kingsley. Rory Catherine Cudsey. Katie Jane Mayer. William Everett Myers. Taylor Angel O'Neill. Chloe Elizabeth Bull. Jack Henry Ransom. Ben Ethan Shemish. Delaney Bain Sullivan. Kate Juliana Tornis. Nicholas Carter Warship. Aryan Agarwal, home room 276, by the way. Hannah Ali. Jillian Michelle Applebaum. Ava Grace Baby. John Michael Harden III. Kathleen Owen Carey. Grace Noel Chisholm. Dylan Patrick Costanzo. Anilo Fiewiger. Mercer Gibon Goldsmith. Dylan Andrew Booth. Emma Jane Waller. Thomas Larkin Melvin. Elias Fidelis Moyes. Madeline Gail Owen. Christoph Vilnius Treaty. Michael Joseph Pushidaro. Ely Eily Flynn Smith. Charles Lewis Tavolato. Dustin Philip Walters. Hannah Lucy Wiggum. Ladies and gentlemen, that is Right House.
Home room 251. Sarah Acostas. Marin Flanagan Burns. Zara Nicole Castro. Ewan Alexander Digna. Logan Riley Guile. Gavin William Gidman. Julia Elizabeth Gove. Bryn Frithrich Graham. Ethan Michael Guise. James Michael Hamoff. Ryan Alexander Heatherman. Vaughn Ingram. Kayla Mary Keckley. Grace Anna Rose Maldonado. Alana Filippelli Marchand. Riley Sun McGoldrick. Lindsay Patricia Messina. Abir Nagayish Knight. Elizabeth Jane Crawford Pullman. Catherine Elizabeth Farrington. Home room 252. Jake Edward Aguilar. Meryl Louise Bernstein. Camden Thomas Coker. Abigail Reagan Davidson. Caden Paul Dijon. Madden Elizabeth DiSabato. DiSabato, sorry. Maria Hildegard Donjani. Jane Catherine Freiler. Isabel Rose Fewer. Colleen Catherine Halliday. Abdul Rahman Abdul Kassim. Sophia Sabia Miller. Jack Carmelo Mayer. Sophia Ann Nappers. Emmanuel Odolora. James Peter Spengler. Anna Whitney Welk. Home room 269. Addison Marie Kane. <laughs> Kaylee Marie Ilinskis. Tyler Stephen Frederick Jelly. Catherine Marie Gorski. Colin Reese Graham. Dylan John Husselman. Caroline Ava Irfino. Irfino. David Kamlaza. <laughs> Melissa Sarah Carpell. Samuel Thomas Keller. Katarina Quinn Leonardo. Thelma Juliana Madrid Ariana. Ryan Elizabeth Manning. John Matthew McCabe. Caleb Douglas McNeil. Hannah May Murray. John Ryan O'Connor. Kyle Pallon Aldovaris Gais. Home room 142. Lillian Aaron Asa. Elizabeth Grace Bearline. Madeline Catalina Biardi. Benjamin Michael Bovine. Bridget Marguerite Brewer. Margaret Jean Carroll. Isabella Vittoria Fellini. Alana Eve Griffin. Evan Edison Grazita. Nicholas Reed Cliver. Colin Michael Mafucci. Michaela Daly Martino. Etiquette Martins. 
Matthew Kyle Minozzi. Jack Booty Minsky. Logan Alexander O. Danielle Marie Wallace Prohaska. Lauren Claire Sillinger. Sillinger. Sillinger, sorry. Rose Anthony George Joaquin. in one last adventure as a class. So let me first say thank you all for joining us on this beautiful, lovely, marvelous evening. And like I said, you guys are special. I would like to acknowledge our Fairfield Level High School administrative team, our Director of People Services and Counseling, Vanessa Montorsi. Great House Principal, Barry Raven. <laughs> Webster House Principal, Greg Police. <laughs> Warner House Principal, Sean Colley. <laughs> Secondary Education Coordinator, Chantel Palumbo. <laughs> and Athletic Director, Todd Parnes. <laughs> I want to say thank you to all of our Board of Education members who are in attendance and our central office staff. And to Mr. and our Superintendent, Mike Testani and all, for all of their amazing support. You guys have always been there for us, and we want to thank you for sharing the stage with us tonight. I would like to also thank all the amazing faculty members here tonight. As they surround the students, almost like a hug of love, they have been there through every step, and they are the most amazing staff. Prepared your children incredibly well for the next steps in their lives. We'd also like to thank all the faculty members who helped make this evening incredibly special. Regina Ryan, Jerry Siska, and our entire secretarial staff. 
head custodian Bob Renetti and all the custodial staff who were ready to set up for an indoor ceremony, and then we switched to an outdoor ceremony. We were back and forth, and they responded amazingly. I also would like to thank Victor Mirror, our director of student activities, who met earlier tonight, who helped organize tonight's graduation. And our music department staff, Nick Albano, Lauren Pine, Suki Bryan, Kay Hyden, and Sam Eckert, for their performance earlier and all year. Looks like we still have a few more to go. So I'll just ask your patience for just another minute while we get set up. So that cool breeze that was blowing all the students' tassels around and the flipping the pages, uh, we would have been really grateful for. We wouldn't have had it inside the gym. When I think about this class, I'm going to remember so many amazing things. I remember when you guys were freshmen, your class officers actually took an exit poll as you guys were leaving the dance to check and see how you could do things even better. And I said to myself, this is going to be a special group. <laughs> Because I just knew that you cared a lot about each other, like I said before, and that you um, really want to make things better at Love Them. And you did. You did. You set a great example for everybody to come. <laughs> the, the, the jokes I'm thinking of right now probably aren't appropriate for the ceremony, so I'm going to go on. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 